Okay, so we have been tagged by Little Mountain Ranch to do a short little video for you. Um, we have to answer some questions. So the, apparently this tag is like a little like mini like get to know you a little bit um, tag, which is cute. Um, well, it yeah. helps to get to know some of the other small channels on YouTube. So if you're looking for uh, new things to watch, um, you can take some of our suggestions or you know watch some of the other channels and take that are tagged and take some of their suggestions and hopefully find some other channels that um, suit your interests because mm -hmm. there are a lot of channels out there with a lot of similar content but you know you might get along with some personalities better than others. I'll let you go first. So three channels that inspire us. We, th we decided we'd each mention a channel and then we would mention one that we like together. Yeah, one, one we like together. So I like Swedish Homestead and the reason why I like Swedish Homestead is because he takes a very traditional approach to uh, growing uh, vegetables and farming and uh, growing livestock. I feel like everything that he does is practical for any homesteader or anybody starting a farm to be able to do on their own. So his solutions are practical and they're um, they're traditional and they're full of very good information. So if you haven't checked out Swedish Homestead, definitely check out Swedish Homestead. And for me, it's a little bit tough because I don't spend a lot of time watching YouTube. Um, I have a little one going around, so I don't really have a lot of time. But of the channels that I have watched bits and pieces of, I would like to mention um, Life in Farmland. He does some amazing videography, like it's, it's art really um, the way he mixes the music and the, and the shots that he does I'm in addition jealous. to in addition to the great um, information he has so um, you should definitely check them out probably our favorite together is honestly the channel that tagged us which yes. is little, little mountain, mountain ranch. ranch we love you guys you're just fantastic and we feel our heart was going out to you whenever you were having the issues with the the uh, forest fires and I can't even imagine what that would be like and um, I just they're pretty awesome so you should check them out yes. what else do we have to answer three things that you do well I had to recruit my daughter's assistants on this because I was debating what is it that I do well um, I write so I in my spare time or whenever the mood strikes I uh, can whip out poems or stories or um, just journaling so that's something that I do really well and um, I can organize and implement things very well so um, management and implementation I'm very good at and the third thing that I'm very good at I don't remember What's the third thing I'm really good at? Being a mom. Yeah, that's true. That, that's right, that's right. I'm good at being a mom, according to my child. So, <laughs> um, I'll take that. I don't know that any mom feels like they're like always doing a fantastic job, but... She does a fantastic job. I try, so. Those are my three, what are your three? Well, it's interesting because in our previous career, Shauna was a COO and I was a CEO. And if you know anything about not those, in the same company, yeah, not in the same company. But if you know anything about those two positions, they're very, very different positions. Both of which are needed for a corporation to function, but they are almost the exact opposite. Because while she is very good at operations and people and people and um, processes, CEOs are generally very good at strategies and coming up with ideas. shiny. I call them shiny ideas. Shiny, shiny ideas. Um, and, and it takes a COO to help implement those ideas. <laughs> so um, if you can imagine that in a relationship, um, it, it could be frustrating at times and it could also be very beneficial at times. But one of my strengths would be coming up with um, shiny ideas and strategies for implementing those ideas. And those are generally complemented very well by Shauna's uh, way of organizing things and um, putting them into operation. Mm -hmm. We're talking about you right now. I know, but I was explaining one of my skill sets. Uh, I'm also very good at figuring things out. Since I was a little kid, I have liked to invent things. 
and uh, create things. So while I may not know everything that I'm doing while we're out here on our homestead, I definitely have a pretty good knack for figuring it out, whether yeah. it's the right way or the wrong way. As long as I get a result, I'm usually generally pretty happy with it. Third thing I'm good at, I have not had help with my answers. Well, because you're, you've been pre prepping. But it also good at. Well, your two that you said were kind of broad. I guess mine were broad too. I'm good at being broad. <laughs> You're good at loving me. But that's not really like, that's more like a natural ability. Huh, that was sweet. Mm -hmm. He's good at coming up with lines. He's very good at... He's good at checking on the news and informing us on what we should or shouldn't be doing and what's going on. He is into politics and the news, so he like digs and and researches and I'm very good at research I yes. throughout my career had to do a lot of research and it's something I enjoy doing I also used to work for a congressman years ago as an intern so I'm very interested in politics and analyzing what's going on out there in fact I've debated doing a video on my viewpoints of North Korea but um, could be a good one. I don't know. <laughs> if you want to listen to me, I'd be glad to comment and let it. him know <laughs> if you want him to do a video on his perspectives on our world and economy and potential war status. <clears throat> but I am very good at, at retaining information and processing. Yes, this would be a good way of putting that. Absolutely. Oh, his memory is fantastic. Sometimes. Three things you do to relax. I don't even know what that word means right now. But, um, I guess taking a few minutes to go, like, take a really hot shower or bath. It's like steaming it out. That's something I do to relax. And then sitting by a campfire, like, just listening to the sounds of the evening and taking in the stars and breathing it in. That's a good one. And then going for walks for me. Just being able to, again, get out into nature and just, it helps you put things into perspective when it, you're surrounded by natural elements. I don't know. Those are my three. I definitely can concur with the campfires, and um, I do like to go for walks. I like to go for walks um, back in the woods of our property. I could just be saying that right now because it's hot in the fields, even though it is going into the fall, and we've had a relatively cool end to summer. It's still hot, and so walking through the fields stresses me out. Especially so it's not a relaxing thing? Not after the copperhead experience, uh, well. but I've had multiple copperhead experiences this year, so I'm a little weary of the fields, but I do like the woods. The horses keep the woods nice and clear, so it's easy to walk through. I like landscaping projects. Those help me relax. They could be, you know, non-relaxive when it comes to the manual labor. The manual labor, but um, when I feel like I, I'm, I like the, the part of landscaping where I'm actually starting to make something look good. I don't like the, the initial phases of it where you're having to put in holes for fence posts and things like that, but I do like designing and uh, putting things into place. Being artistic. Being artistic, and then seeing the results of that. That, for me, allows me to escape from everyday stresses. I also like to run. When I'm really stressed out, I will go for a run because that um, I, that's probably the only time now that I actually listen to music and just zone out. zone out is when I go running. I used to do that when I was in the car, but now I'm constantly um, not driving. What else was there? I think it's just tagging other channels now. I think. Three things that excite you. Uh. So three things that excite Shauna. I was excited that we got chickens. I was excited that we got chickens. And out of our seven, but how many chickens do we have? We have five hens and one rooster. Out of our six chickens, four of them were free. 
Yeah, I don't know how that happened, but... We didn't even plan on getting the chickens. We wanted to have chickens. We've been... We were actually planning on working towards getting chickens. And then this weekend, opportunity knocked. We got six chickens for $14, and... And so far, so good. We don't know yet. So far, so It was so exciting. Good. But, so, I guess doing, accomplishing goals that we have set forth when we accomplish them, that's very exciting to me. So, um, something like getting chickens is exciting. Uh, what's something that excites you? You said that excites you too. You, well, yeah, it excites me when I get free chickens. When you get free things? Yes! yes. Okay, I guess, yeah. Um, something else that excites me, I guess would be ex um, experiencing like a new place. So I like, he and I both like to explore and we pre this homesteading venture we traveled quite a bit more and that's something that really is exciting to me is exploring new places and seeing new areas or things whether that's just taking a hike or finding a cool little town that has like quirky things like that's exciting to me to experience like new interesting little tidbits of culture and places is very exciting you want to on that note, um, one of the things that excites me is uh, outdoor adventures where it adrenaline. may spur a little bit of adrenaline. In fact, one of the dates that I took Shauna on was a zip lining date up in West Virginia where we did the longest and highest zip line in West Virginia, which was quite fun for me. I enjoyed it, but um, I used to whitewater kayak as well. And I would say that that level of excitement also transpires over to um, relaxation for me, even though it's not quite the same feeling. It's it's the same type of enjoyment, I guess. But it is, I definitely get excited over things like that. I just don't do as much anymore because I'm married with kids. And some of the things I did weren't very smart, which I actually may put up a video on... Um, what happens when you chase an adrenaline rush too far? No, let's check. Ugh. I have no comment. I don't know what depends. I get like kind of silly excited over little things, but I guess I get excited for our kiddos when they um, are discovering something new or learning something new. That like makes me happy to like see them like working through something or discovering something whether it's like a little thing or a big thing like that's very like exciting rewarding for me I don't know if that's the same thing that you're asking but that is exciting to see the kids find something that or accomplish something for the first time or learn something and you see it kind of click in their brain it's like yes come on you can do it. like little internal cheerleader I don't think anybody heard anything with that Bronco this road does not excite me I'm talking about things that do excite me Something that does excite me on a daily basis is my wife. And I would say that includes my family, but she is the most exciting thing to me every day when I wake up. Not every day. Sometimes I'm not very nice. Sometimes he's not very nice. Rarely am I not very nice. <clears throat> anyway. All right, so we have to tag five other channels. So one of the channels that I have watched, and I haven't, like I said, I haven't really watched any of these channels, like all of their videos, except for Little Mountain Ranch. I've watched all yours. Um, so I want to tag Patera with Appalachia's, Appalachia's Homestead because I, found, I have found a lot of her videos to be super informative, and she cracks me up with her personality. So um, Patera, you are tagged. I would like to tag Meta Spencer. While Meta Spencer is not exactly a homesteading channel, and, and we have things that aren't necessarily homesteading as well, but he he had MS, or still has MS, but he is a very creative guy, does a lot of fun things. He also has a small homestead that he's been working on, and he's posted some videos on that as well. But he's very inventive and creative, which is probably why I like him. So. Um, if you're looking for a channel that is going to have a little more focus on how to uh, create things like restore an old well or um, he's, he's been refurbishing a prison bus, um, Meta Spencer is a very interesting channel 
and a lot of his stuff that he does work on, a lot of his projects do apply to homesteading. So as far as sticking with the category, he might be a little out of it, but I would like to tag my dispenser. Life in farmland, I would like to tag you guys um, just because I think you guys are fantastic and somebody, you guys need to go check his stuff out because it's beautiful. I just love it. So you are tagged. Swedish Homestead, obviously that's my favorite channel, so we've got to tag them. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, again, that channel is just a very, very good traditional sense of farming um, and extremely informative. Anybody can accomplish what he is doing. Um, and that's not downplaying him. He's very good at explaining things and doing things in a manner that uh, we all could find resources to be able to do. Um, that's why I like it. There's so many good channels out there. It's yeah. actually very hard to choose. If, if we watched YouTube all the time, we may have, it, it wouldn't be so hard, but because we, we watch it sporadically or we're watching it to get information, um, we end up watching a lot of different people we think everybody does a good job with their videos. But you, um, you learn something, like little pieces of everything, little pieces of different things from everybody. So, I mean, YouTube community in general is fantastic. Um, on that note, I I would recommend Sutherland. That's what I was gonna say. They're they're very good. Um, they're they're another family, and they have uh, very good little homesteading videos. Go check them out. Yeah, go check them out. Yeah. Can we do a sixth one? Why? What are you wanting to do? You know, for him, I like him. He's funny. I mean, I can. You can throw in a bonus. We're gonna throw in a bonus. <laughs> Vino Farm, because uh, we, we found Vino Farm because he actually had a situation with his farmhouse where it had been infested with termites, and they didn't realize that. So they had to rebuild the entire house, board by board, similar to what we did, and um, that is how we initially found their channel. Similar to us, they've tried different things with their with their land growing vines for grapes, which is why they're called Vino Farm. And they, you know, kind of struggle with their little homesteading projects, but he's a lot further along than we are at this point. Um, he's done a lot of great things. One of the things that he's been working on lately is a very big um, honey beehive, and he's very well organized. I kind of envy that part of it, but I think I just envy the bees, to be honest The with bees? You. Yes, I want to be the king of the bees. <laughs> I want bees and I want honey. I love honey. I'll be going. I have a bee bible upstairs. Mm -hmm. We found it in a random bookstore and had to have it. But okay, so channels, if you have already been tagged in this, then just, it's fine, no big deal. But if not, we will email you the questions. Yeah. And thanks for watching, guys. Aw, Tail's saying hello.